Servant Season 3, Episode 3 was titled Hair. Julian digs for the truth about Jericho while new visitors at the local park worry Leanne. What is going on to all my Servant fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files, Elliot back again breaking down the latest episode of Apple TV Plus Servant Season 3, Episode 3, an episode in which we focus a little bit more on Julian from the past but also in the present. He's trying to figure out who this baby Jericho belongs to. Meanwhile, Sean just keeps allowing these random visitors to come into their house and we're going to talk about... What do we think happened to Julian and Dorothy's mom? We're breaking it all down here in this spoiler review, but before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, we're on the quest to 20,000 subscribers, so if you want to be a part of this awesome community, make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell. And as you all can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this review, well, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, but also share this review, but more importantly, once you've seen this new episode of Servant, what'd you think about it? Let's talk about your pros, your cons, the significance of that. The hair in this episode what do we think happened to julian and dorothy's mom and of course your thoughts and theories for the weeks ahead let's talk about it all in the comment section so just giving you all my brief thoughts before we break it all down here in the spoiler review i'm really enjoying this season so far i i'm thinking that this three episodes so far is more in line with the tone from season one versus season two kind of being a little bit inconsistent for me but i'm really enjoying the narrative so far diving deeper into these characters diving deeper into their past I really enjoy getting that that kind of perspective because I always forget every time Julian steps into this house, that has to be so heavy on him. Of course, you know, we'll talk about the flashback in this episode. But again, the big question for me is, and this has been a question since season one, it's so taboo for Julian and Dorothy to talk about their mom. What happened to her? We actually get a mention of her twice in this episode. So I'm really intrigued by this season so far. I'm loving that we're getting a little bit more context of who these people are. I would love to get like a Julian, like straight up Julian focused episode, but we get a little bit of that in this episode. And I really enjoyed it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So let's break it all down as we open the episode with this flashback, which every time we see Julian, we saw this in season two, it just gives me chills. When we see Julian walk into the house with all the dead, you know, the flies going around the dead body of, you know, obviously baby Jericho. And just it just it just sends chills through my spine when we get that. And again, exploring the depths of who Julian is what happened not only to you know his mindset that night that he found Jericho but again what happened to their mom because he calls their mom in this episode which we'll talk about but again Julian one of my favorite characters and I love that we kind of get a little bit more time with him in this episode but I don't know if you all noticed when Julian and Vera are you know driving up to Turner's house she's talking about her past and in this scene she mentions that she had a child but she gave her child away at birth and she doesn't have any attachment to that child but very important to note that in regards to her experience with children but more importantly this is three episodes in a row that we have seen this character. She's become a regular on this show, which we talked about it last week. Is she someone we can trust? Is she a Lesser Saints member? And again, what is her significance to this season? Someone to keep an eye out for. And we'll talk more about her as we go on in this episode. But we get the conversation being brought up because, again, Julian's been saying this since, you know, season one. He believes that baby Jericho is the child of Leanne. We'll get into that a little bit later, but his whole goal in this episode is to get the proof by having a DNA test. So let's check in with Dorothy, who is dressed up as Marilyn Monroe this entire episode for work. But she lets Julian know to let Sean know that one of the moms from last week's episode will be coming back to get her diaper bag. And immediately when I heard that, I'm like, oh, that diaper bag might have, you know, a camera in there, some, you know, audio in there to record what's going on in the Turner's house. I think that the mom that was coming back was going to be a Lesser Saints member. She might be, but I think it's less, more cynical, less, you know, more sinister than I'm thinking right now. But I'm like, oh, she's coming back for that bag because she planted that back there because she's a Lesser Saints member. But we'll talk about that mother a little bit later. But time to visit the park with Sean and Leanne. And immediately what I loved about this episode, and this is one of my favorite scenes, this is such a beautiful day at the park. Children are laughing. You know, families are having a good time. It's just such a beautiful scenery. But then it becomes scary and it's tension felt because we're seeing the park in the perspective of Leanne, who we all know Leanne is just on pins and needles because she's like, are you a Lesser Saints member? Is that child a Lesser Saints member? She's on her, you know, radar. Everyone's on her radar right now. So I kind of love that perspective from Leanne going to this beautiful area. But they don't last at the park that long because we see this wild 
daughter walk up to Sean asking for spare change, which he gives her that spare change. And immediately Leanne's like, we got to go. So her, I'm more inclined to believe Leanne because we'll talk about these squatters in the episode. But the more and more people we're seeing, the more I believe that the Lesser Saints are coming, coming closer and closer into getting what they want, which is either Leanne, that baby, or the Turner family. But uh, we need to start listening to Leanne, Sean, and Dorothy. But speaking of Sean, very interesting moment. I put in my notes here. This is very, I'm, I'm very questionable about this scene in regards to what it means. Sean makes Leanne some soup. We all know it's her favorite soup. And they were talking about soup when they were, you know, looking at the flowers in this episode. But Leanne finds a piece of hair in the soup. Now, we all know Sean to be the most meticulous chef that we've seen on TV, right? He is very detailed and meticulous about how he makes his food. So I would find it very hard to believe that there's a piece of hair in a dish that Sean makes. What does that scene mean? Is it a, a sign foreshadowing that Liam was like, hair, I need to get all the hair in my room the first someone can't find? I, I'm still kind of, I watched that scene a couple of times. Like, what is the significance of her finding that hair in her soup? It's not her hair because it seemed to be blonde hair. Was it Dorothy's, you know, wig that she was wearing for Marilyn Monroe? Am I thinking too much about it? Let me know what you all interpret that hair being the soup as. I'm still kind of wrapping my brain about the significance of that hair and I can't seem to put my finger on it let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below but let's check back in with julian who we get our first appearance of roscoe in this season as they're kind of catching up and julian has a job for him which he wants roscoe to get the dna from jericho as well as leanne but he refuses to do that he does have a re recommendation for julian at this point and we noticed that that same squatter is in the background and we'll talk about her once we get towards the end of this review but let's let's rewind a little bit talk a little bit about roscoe again this is our first time seeing him this season but he mentioned a couple times in this episode and he mentioned this last time when we saw him in season two he's fighting with his wife and there's also a mention of a family member being in the hospital i don't know if that's his wife or is that someone else but what's going on with roscoe again we know that he infiltrated the lesser saints he came out the other side a very different person talking about the hand the hook the baby's crying do we think that Roscoe has been recruited by this cult? Do we think that he hurt his wife? What are your thoughts about Roscoe so far? Because I think he's a character that we should be keeping an eye out for as well. But let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section. Mr. Sean here. This guy is just being a good Samaritan, right? Giving everyone food, allowing people in his house. I don't know what's going on with Sean. He's been letting the guard down so far this season. I don't know if I like that so far. It feels like it's kind of going against the grain of the character. I know he feels like he wants to get some type of normalcy, but I feel like it's kind of going against the Sean that we knew from the first two seasons. But He's a good guy. He's feeding people food now, which is not a good idea, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But let's go back to Julian, cut back to a flashback of that night. And it's important to remember, he is trying to call his mom in this scene. So we're thinking, okay, did their mom die? Did she just vanish? Did she disappear? Is she a part of the Lesser Saints? But he calls his mom and she doesn't seem to pick up the phone. At least we don't think she does because it cuts the scene right there, which a very quick scene, but an important scene because again, it goes back to what happened to their mother? Go ahead and start to leave your, your theories and thoughts of the mom in the comment section. But cut back to Julian who goes into Jericho's room, plucks a piece of Jericho's hair, and now he's on the mission. I got to get one more piece of hair. And he goes into Leanne's room, looks into the sink, looks into under the bed, and can't seem to find any hair. In come Le Le Leanne questioning, okay, this is the second person that's in my room, uh, you know, last week with that random mother. Now, Julian, what are you doing in here, Julian? Well, he, you know, kind of divides the plan oh i missed you baby you know i missed having sex with you and he puts his hand in her hair and tries to get hair out but he's not able to and i love that <laughs> leanne just immediately returns the favor and yanks him by his hair but it's in this moment again i'm just thinking to myself it is very strange, realistically speaking, the places he was looking for hair, he wasn't able to find hair on her brush, in her, you know, in her sink, in the, in the, you know, the, um, in the shower. It goes back to my question about the, the hair in the soup. Was it her, was the house channeling her and, and warning her to get every follicle or hair out of her room because Julian was on this mission for the DNA test? I don't know. I might be thinking too much about this hair thing because the name of this episode was hair. So let me know. Was it like purposefully set up that there were no hair in her room because Leanne knew that he was going to be in her room? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section. But notice when uh, when he does try to get the hair, he doesn't obviously get the hair from um, Leanne. He goes and talks on the phone with Vera. 
Very important to note that she's like, you know, how about you get DNA from your sister? He's like, no, that's not the plan. I want to get to the show that the baby is connected to Leanne. And then we hear her say, well, we need to go and look into Dorothy because she needs to face her truth. What the hell? Why? Why does she need to face her truth? Why is she so concerned with Dorothy? Which makes me go back to my theory last week that she must be a part of the lesser scenes because why is she so concerned about Dorothy and facing her truth? Vera, I think she's a Lesser Saints member. Let me know your thoughts on that comment. But going back to Julian, who goes into the living room, magically finds a hairbrush thinking that it's his sister, and we'll talk about that. But it's important to note, when he comes upstairs from talking to Vera, who was at the stairs? It was Leanne. Do we think Leanne planted that brush there for him to find because he over she overheard him on the phone? Because if so, she is super quick to be able to, you know, oh, let me look in the bag, in the diaper bag, and put the brush here. Like, that was very kind of, I don't know. Again, is the house talking to Leanne? Let me know if that is the case on that moment there. But going back to Sean, who at this point, he's allowing the squatters to come to his house. I said this last week. I think it's like incredibly kind of silly of Sean and Dorothy to allow people into their house and now Sean allowing a squatter in the house with their child in the house but I'm so glad that the show heard me and you know they wrote it into this episode because I love that Dorothy addresses my questions like why are you being so open to allowing strangers in your house and Dorothy poses that question to him in regards to the squatting situation so thank you writers thank you Dorothy for addressing my concerns about the Sean is allowing people in the house after being you know the incident with Josephina, the robbery last week, and now this situation. So thank you, writers. But <laughs> moving on, speaking of Dorothy, leave it to her to spin this squatting situation. She now wants to make a story out of it, and she tries to approach the squatters. The two girls don't want to talk to her, but then she gets to talk to one of the guys, and he's starting to talk about how, as a child, he was kicked out of foster care, but now he's just out to fend for himself. And then the camera kind of switches out, which makes makes you think how did that happen because we'll talk about the ending there their magical abilities to kind of cut what he was trying to say on the camera which was something to be uh, to take hold of but then one of the producers he notices that Sean's giving food to the squad He's like oh let's go ahead and play to that narrative which we'll talk about here because as Dorothy is showing the family the new segment about Sean being this good Samaritan helping people out I don't know if it was just uh it's just me but it's a very kind of nice kind of going back to Sean. We all know that he left his family in season one because he wanted to be a celebrity chef and wanted to be, you know, a big famous person on TV. Now tie that back to this scene. He's like, oh, you know, I get my little 15 minutes of fame. I thought that was kind of interesting how they connect those two narratives there. But it's also important to note is a little bit of jealousy in the air because Leanne, I don't know if Leanne is purposely doing this, trying to make Dorothy jealous. She's like, oh, you look so good on camera, Sean. You speak so well. You pop so well on TV. And then we see Dorothy's like, okay, well, hold on. Let us let me get my closing thoughts. And the, they cut her segment. So Leanne uh, was playing up to the jealousy because Dorothy's like, I'm a little bit mad right now that my husband's getting a little bit, we know Dorothy loves attention and she didn't get the attention that she wanted. But again, I don't know if this is going to tie into Sean again, leaving his family to maybe do more good deeds in the city and have more camera appearances. Let me know your thoughts on that. But the moment that I really enjoyed about this episode is a moment that we've been waiting for for a long time, addressing what happened to Jericho as Julian tell his sister what he's been up to with the whole DNA test. And there's a little bit of a twist, you know, leave it to N. Night Shyamalan to put a twist into this conversation he gets into that night this is the first time that we've had a character directly talk about the night and the way that is portrayed between these two which is a fantastic scene he goes into what happened that night and Dorothy obviously is denying what happened and he addresses you know Jericho died he said that loud and clear and outside but then we see Dorothy she spins it she talks about a night but not that night and he says she mentions what what about mom she mentions the their mom situation so what happened to their mom when he called her that night did, did did he find out that they're not only did he lose his nephew but then he lost his mom what is the situation with their mom is she still alive is she somehow some way a part of the lesser saints because i go back to season one when Uncle George, I believe he met Dorothy for the first time, he called her Dottie, like without even knowing that her nickname was Dottie. Does Uncle George know her mom? Let me know your thoughts, your theories, your predictions about what happened to their mom. And again, Dorothy switching up the narrative about she never, she still cannot face the night that she 
was the reason their child died. It was, you know, obviously not intentional, but a very powerful scene. And I, I got chills when that scene happened. But surprise, surprise, it's the hair follicles of the woman picking up their diaper bag. So when I'm thinking, oh, it's a lesser saints member, it's no, it's to tie in that the diaper bag woman, that's her hair on the brush. But again, why was her brush just randomly out of the bag? Goes back to my theory that Leanne was the one that planted that because we see when the camera pans, Leanne's at the step of the stairs like, I got you, Julian. I'm, I'm peeping game. I know what you was up to. So very interesting moment, no less. But we end the episode with the squatters that we met early in the episode looking outside the Turner's house and looking at Leanne, which alludes to them being Lesser Saints member. What a great way to end the episode. But the question I want to post to you all is the question I've been saying this whole review. What do we think happened to Leanne, or I should say Dorothy and uh, Julian's mother? Is she dead? Is she alive? Is she a Lesser Saints member? Is it just something maybe less sinister than I'm thinking? Let me know your thoughts on that. What was the scene with the hair being in Leanne's food? What's the significance of that? Uh, Roscoe and his family situation. Is something going on with his family and Lesser Saints? Let me know your thoughts there. Will we continue the DNA plot? Uh, you know, Will Julian try to get the hair from Leanne again? And again, the question that I've been asked for the last couple of weeks Vera, is she okay? Is she just a good character, a good person just trying to help people out? Or is she a Lesser Saints member? Let me know your thoughts on that. Again, I thought this was a really great episode. Poses a lot of questions. Gives us a little bit of a moment with Julian. I hope we get more of Julian's backstory. And again, more of the, you know, Julian and Dorothy's backstory. And uh, But again, overall, I enjoyed it. But that's just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts, pros, cons, thoughts, and theories, and everything in between in the comments below. If you stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate you make sure before you leave to give the video a thumbs up share the video leave your thoughts in the comments and of course subscribe to this channel and join this awesome community hope you all enjoyed this review hope you're staying safe as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel check out my other content and we'll catch you on the next video